Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Um, what were those steps I suggested? First thing to do is. Um, no, first thing to do. Okay, but actually, the first thing, my exam solution tip, is to number them one and two. Right, so number one is x minus seven y is zero, and number two is three x minus four y equals seventeen. And we talked about why that's important because we need to keep a track of which one was y, which one was two. Uh, sorry, which one was one, which one was two, because when we rearrange one, it must go into two. Or if we rearrange two, it must go into one. Don't substitute one into one or two into two because it doesn't work. All right. So which one would you like to rearrange? One. Why did you choose number one? Because it looks easier. Because it's number one. Yeah. Not because it's number one, but this time because it is easier. What are we going to make the subject? X or Y? Y. X. Y is X. The easier subject to make. Because it comes before Y. What? It comes before Y. No. It's got nothing to do with it comes before or anything. Because it's just one X. It's just one X already. And that's what I want. I want X equals. Plus, this is a negative seven Y's. If I've got seven Y's and I only want one Y, I have to divide by seven. If it's negative, I have to have positive. So there's two things to sort out here. Whereas this is just 1x. So how do I get x on its own? So I'm going to rearrange number 1, and I have to do plus 7y's. And I get a nice simple x equals 0. Wait, no, 7y. 7y, good. Some people get confused, but what zero, what zero, what zero? Just it, isn't it? It's like saying, what is zero plus five? We don't say it's zero plus five, we say five. All right, what do we do then? That's my new number one. Oh, we, no. substitute. we substitute, don't we? So we replace anything x with, seven. so my x in this one gets replaced with 7y. So my new number 2 becomes 3 times 7y minus 4y equals 17. What do now? Uh, 21 y's minus 4 y's equals 17. It's going to end up being nice and easy. 21 y's minus 4 y's is 17 y equals y equals 1. Am I finished? Yeah. You have to find Which one do you want to substitute it into? One. Does it matter? Yes. No. Now we've found out what y is, we actually have um, lots of options. Oh, x equals I could put it in that one, I could put it in that one, or I can put it in that one, which is the easiest one to use. x equals 7y, because I want to know what x is and I know what y is. So let's use this one. Use the new number one in this case, x equals seven y when y equals one. So x equals seven times one, which means x equals seven. X equals seven. So they are my two. That's the solution to this system of equations. Should we check? How do we check? Put it into two. I did use number one. I know that x is seven, y is one works because I used it. But does it work in number two? So we can check with number two. So three times seven minus four times one 
does it equal 17? Yeah. That's the question. 21 minus 4 does equal 17. Mm -hmm. So 21 minus 4 should be equal 17, and it does. So, oh, no. So remember, that was a nice, simple one, because do you remember the first example we did had fractions and everything there? Um, so we started hard and we've, we've gone easy. <coughs> so if the two lines look like that, I don't know what they do, but this would cross at a particular point. Seven. That point would be X is seven, seven Y is seven. one. Yeah, x is 7, y is 1. So the coordinates at that point would be 7, 1. So that would be the visual representation. Okay. Oh, 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 Pardon? He's come back on. Yeah. Stop recording. Okay, so this is, prime, this is a tricky one on many levels. All right? It's tricky because if you look at the start, when we rearrange, Nothing's nice to rearrange. We get a fraction. Okay? So we've got this fraction that's been substituted in. We need to expand the brackets. Now remember when you expand the brackets, you only multiply the numerator of a fraction, don't you, when you multiply? You don't multiply the denominator as well, otherwise you don't do a multiplication. We then have to multiply through by what you've divided by. But when you do that, you multiply all the parts. Don't double multiply the fraction, remember that? So all of that's tricky in its own right, but then we end up with an x value that is a fraction. The other problem with that is, if it's a fraction that I turn into a decimal and have to round, what would be the problem? It'll be inaccurate. It'll be it will be it will lack accuracy, yes. So what we do is we try and simplify the fraction if we can. Can we simplify the no. 13 is a prime number, so if 44 doesn't divide by 13, can't do anything, which it doesn't. We still need to find y, though. So we're going to do that in exactly the same way. We're going to put it into one of these. All right? Now, I know that x equals 13 over 44. Which one would you prefer to use? Number one or number two? They're both going to be relatively tricky. So let's just use number one with x equals 13 over 44. And we have 5 times 13 over 44 minus 3y's equals negative 2. So you're thinking, well, that's not easy. And you're right, it's not easy. But we can deal with it. How do I do 5 times 13 over 44? 13 times 5, 44 times 5. <coughs> no. no, you don't. We just no, do 5 no. times 13, don't we, which is? Sorry, I'm um, 65. 65 divided by 44 minus 3y's equals negative 2. What do you do now? Minus 65 over 44. Or plus. Well, I would actually, I'm going to add 3 y's and add 2. So it becomes 65 over 44 plus 2 equals 3 y's. So just add, add 88 to the fraction. Okay, yeah. So 2, 65 over 44, 2 is actually... 88 over 44. Are we all happy with that? Yeah. 88 divided by 44 is 2. Yeah? Oh, I'm sad. Why and then you can add them together. 65 Why plus is that 48. It's not, it's a 44. I've just. Oh. It didn't do C days. What, 65 plus 88? <coughs> Hundred fifty-three. 
So just divide by three. Divide by three. How do you do a fraction divide by three? 153 divided by 44 divided by 3 is y. So to divide a fraction by a whole number, you actually multiply the denominator. If you remember that from your M1 days. 153 divided by 44 times 3. 44 times 3 is... Then we just do it. Are we able to simplify that? 1.15909. That's not simplifying it. <coughs> and I can't plot that on the graph because you've rounded it. So actually, my solutions at the moment are x equals 13 over 44 and y equals 153 over 132. Challenging one that, and like I said, on Thursday, I mean, we'll end up with the same one opposite, so it's still going to be a difficult one at the end, all right? But with the method of substitution, we're quite tricky. We're going to use another method called elimination method, which will get us there a bit easier, I believe. All right? So that's the next thing. So just to remind you, we are coming up to exam time. If you need to do more practice on this, now's the time to be doing it, right? Uh, we're not going to spend any more class time on substitution methods.